a modern residential complex situated in a bustling urban area. The apartment block stands tall, showcasing a sleek design with a mix of brick, concrete, and glass elements. Veronica and I stand beside David at this small and two-story apartment building nestled in a quiet neighborhood in New Jersey. The hallway is well maintained, painted in a neutral color, and adorned with simple yet tasteful artwork on the walls. David, visibly nervous, takes a deep breath, his anticipation evident. His eyes dart back and forth, scanning the hallway as if searching for reassurance or gathering his thoughts before the impending encounter. I can't do this. Oh, come on, David. If we don't go in, I'll have to resort to my backup plan, serenading Beth with, I will always love you from the hallway. Trust me, nobody wants that. Just so we're clear, I had strong reasons for leaving. Strong reasons? Did they involve a secret mission to infiltrate a penguin gang or something? Because otherwise, I'm not sure strong reasons cut it. Look at it this way, David. If you fix what you've done in the past, you might have your son back in your life again. And who knows, you might even get a participation trophy for Dad of the Year. I knock on Beth's front door. And if you can't reconcile with Beth and Luke, you lose your son and the potential love of your life. And, uh, hey, on the bright side, you'll have plenty of free time to perfect your juggling skills or learn how to yodel. Silver linings, my friend. Beth opens the front door, looks surprised to see us. Well, 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 look who decided to finally come back from the dead. I know, I'm sorry. For what, exactly? Leaving your son for six months, not calling, what? Don't you dare say for being abducted by aliens, I've heard that one before. All of it. My, my head was a mess. Well, that excuses everything. You should have blamed it on a faulty GPS. <sighs> At least that would have been more believable. Can I come in and apologize to Luke? He's at school. Even if he wasn't, he wouldn't want to see you. I'm sorry. Luke wheels himself over. Mom? What's going on? Oh, it's you. Hi, Luke. I'm Veronica. I'm your father's friend. This is Vinny. Why is she acting like I don't know who Vinny is? Is she crazy? I laugh. Yeah, she is. First step to recovery is admitting it, right? <laughs> Veronica slaps me on the arm as I continue laughing. Beth, we need to discuss this like adults. Can we do that, please? Oh, you want to act like an adult now. Oh, so where was this attitude six months ago when I told you about Connor? Oh, I wasn't the one who cheated. Except you were. Because you did cheat on me back in college with my mom. This family's really messed up. Luke, why don't we leave the adults to talk this out? We can go grab some ice cream and pretend this is a Jerry Springer episode. I admit it. I made some mistakes. You made a few, if I remember correctly. It's like you majored in how to screw up relationships in college. So do you, but we need to move on. I don't need to move on from anything. You hurt me. You hurt me badly. And I'm sorry. There's only so many ways I can apologize to you, Beth. Maybe I can hire a skywriter next time to spell it out for you. Did you know that I was in the hospital? You were hospitalized? Yeah, for a month with pneumonia. At one stage, doctors gave me a 50-50 chance of actually surviving. I was close to death. My son could have lost me. He could have lost both his parents. Fuck, I'm, I'm so sorry. Can I make it up to you with a world's best ex-boyfriend mug? Yeah, because that makes up for everything. Just get out of my apartment and take your world's best ex-boyfriend mug with you. Beth, come on. I'm really trying here, please. David tries to touch Beth. She slaps away his hand. I said, get the fuck out of my house. No touching privileges for you. David's shoulders slump. He walks out of the house. Beth slams the front door shut. David is sitting down. He looks downbeat as me and Veronica walk over to him. Well, no point in pulverizing your self-esteem over this mishap. So you screwed up. Big fucking deal. 
Real question is, how are you going to repair the damage with Beth and Luke? Picture this. A perpetual pizza party. Compliments of yours truly. What do you say? There's no making up for what I did, Vinny. Uh, I didn't count you for a loser, David. But if you want to keep wallowing like this, I might have to reconsider. Well, I'm right. Is there anything I can do to fix this? It's time to wave the white flag, my friend. Or, if you're feeling adventurous, slip into a clown suit, become the life of the circus. Just ask my cousin Eddie. Changed his life. How about you start small? Like, really small. Maybe get Luke a pet goldfish and hope it distracts him enough to forgive you. What do you mean? I mean, David can get Luke on board. He could bribe him with his favorite Star Wars toys. And then once he has him on board, it's like a Jedi mind trick to win over Bath. Yeah, I doubt that. Luke might just end up using the force to throw those toys back at you, David. At least it's a start. And if it doesn't work, we can always resort to plan B. A magic show with disappearing acts. Maybe you can make your mistakes disappear too. Magic show? Ah, I'm in. I've always wanted to saw David in half. I laugh, trying to lighten the mood. You two still have feelings for each other. I can see it. I'm ignoring that. What do you think of my plan? So I get Luke on board. And then that warms Beth's heart enough to fix everything. Well, I wouldn't say everything will be fixed. You did run away from your family for six months. It's like trying to fix a broken vase with duct tape. But it's a start. Maybe with time it can become a beautiful mosaic. You know what? I'll do it. I'll go buy Luke some Star Wars gifts and hope it triggers his love for a galaxy before I fall away. Good. Off you go, young Jedi, and may the false be with you. David gets up from his seat, determined to take action, and walks off. David is standing next to a delivery man. David knocks on Beth's department door. Luke answers. Stood up on crutches. David is shocked. Oh, crap. What are you doing here? Well, I came to give you a gift, but I'm guessing it's a bad idea. Well, that would depend on the gift. What is it? It's an electric wheelchair. She can zoom around like a race car driver with crutches. Seemed like a good idea at the time. David winces and Luke glares at him. David moves aside to show Luke the gleaming electric wheelchair. Look, I'm not that crippled anymore. I get physiotherapy now. Doctors say I'll be able to walk normally again in two years if I continue doing my therapy. Are you saying I shouldn't bother with it? The delivery man looks to exit. Uh, I'm just gonna shoot off. Good luck, bud. Well, shouldn't I bother? Well, uh, would you look at that? Suddenly I wish I was in a Japanese game show. You're unbelievable. Look, I can see that. Luke, I'm so sorry. Can I make it up to you with a lifetime supply of ice cream? Make it a lifetime supply of pizza. We might have a deal. Beth walks over. Oh, go ahead. Throw it at me. Well, I think you're more than capable of doing that yourself. But let's be honest, a lifetime supply of pizza does have its merits. I just want to fix things. Well, maybe some things aren't fixable. But hey, if you're offering free pizza, we can negotiate. Beth shuts the door on David. David walks off, determined to come up with a better plan. Veronica and I are eating dinner, having beef ravioli with a couple of homemade beers. David's here with us, but the kid ain't touching his food. Seems lost in thought. You should have gone with the Star Wars toys. The wheeling chair was insensitive. Although, imagine Luke as a Jedi on wheels. That could be a sight to behold. Leanne enters. Well, I'm here. What's the emergency? Sunshine here made things even worse with Beth and Luke. Well, it's just to come up with a solution to fix it. Oh, yeah, the wheelchair fiasco. What were you thinking, David? Did you miss the memo on how not to offend your son, 101? I was trying to come up with something to help my son. I failed. Sorry. Look, I think I have a solution to fix this. 
How about you take Luke to Disneyland? John Bon Jovi has connections with the Disney head honcho. I can get him to arrange a special trip for you, Beth and Luke. Call it a family vacation. Mickey Mouse might just work his magic. I don't know. I don't think she'll want to do that unless there's a roller coaster that can fix broken hearts. Oh, yeah, I agree. It's a long shot. Well, it's better than us standing here playing without a plan to fix this. What have we got to lose? I say, let's try it. Besides, I've always wanted to see Mickey Mouse break up a family dispute. Fine. I'll do it. I'll take Luke and Beth to Disneyland. Should be fun. If all else fails, we challenge Goofy to a dance-off. Veronica and Leanne share a look. Uh, I better hold your head over there to tell them. David stands up and heads towards the door. Why the hell did you suggest that idea? What? What's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? They won't be allowed into the parks. Why not? Why not? Because Beth is barred. That's why not. She is? David Jr. and she went there in high school. They got caught having a romantic interlude on one of the rides. Let's just say they were trying to experience the Magic Kingdom in more ways than one. They got barred from every Disney park in the world for life. Well, fuck. Fuck indeed. What do you think will happen now? David's going to suggest the idea. Beth's going to put him down. And nothing will be resolved between them. Well, I can fix this. Oh, you've done enough. Leave it to me. I've got a plan that will make Cinderella jealous. What do you got planned? I'll tell you once I made a few calls to my bank. Excuse me. Leanne takes out her cell phone to make a call, leaving Veronica and me wondering what her plan is. David knocks on Beth's door. It's 12 a.m. There's no answer. David tries a door handle, and the door is unlocked. Puts himself in. The living room is dark, so David switches on the lights. Lights come on, and Beth screams. Ah! David screams. Beth is kissing a man. David, what the hell are you doing here? The hell am I doing here? What the hell are you doing engaging in romantic rendezvous with a stranger on a school night? Should I brought some popcorn? The man picks up his coat, starts putting it on. The man isn't a stranger, he's Alan. Alan raises his hand to say hi. I don't need his name. How long is he staying? We need to talk. Perhaps we can all schedule a group therapy session. We have nothing to talk about. Get out. Look, I came here to suggest we take a family trip to Disneyland together. Minus Alan. Human suction cup of excitement, of course. Alan laughs and goes to exit. Alan, I'm sorry. Don't leave because of him. Alan! Alan walks off and Luke enters. What's the commotion about? I heard screams. Wilson, stumbled upon your ma in the midst of a heated rendezvous with Alan. Undisputed maestro of napkin origami, his folds are so mesmerizing they'd put a magician to shame. Oh, give me a break. And what are you, a Texan gunslinger? Alan is the definition of Borden, Mom. He's a science fiction fanatic. It's like having a permanent ticket to Snoozeville. So what are you, Luke? The captain of excitement police? Uh, Mom, I'm a dorky kid. It's in my nature to appreciate science fiction and embrace my inner nerd. Okay, are we going to Disneyland or not? We're going to Disneyland? Sweet! Can I dress up as a Jedi and challenge Darth Vader to a lightsaber duel? We're not going anywhere. Your dad and I are barred from Disneyland. And your dad is leaving because I'm going to unleash my secret karate moves on him. I want to spend time with my son, Beth. So have a family adventure and show Alan what real excitement looks like. Well, you should have thought of that before you left six months ago. Now get out unless you want me to use my power of my super mom punch. Mom, that's a bit extreme. Dad's trying to reconnect with us. Go to bed, Luke. You have school tomorrow. Dad, do you want to pick me up tomorrow morning for school? We can create our own superhero backstory, save the day before classes. You're not spending time with him. Yeah, sure, son. I'd like to spend time with you tomorrow morning. David sticks out his tongue playfully at Beth and then walks off. Leanne is in the front seat driving. Veronica and David sit in the back. 
Lucas pardoned me, but Beth is as stubborn as a bull. Won't budge an inch. Well, your mom has an ingenious plan to win Beth's forgiveness. It's a real game changer. Oh, no kidding. Is it a journey to the moon? Maybe a personalized apology delivered by Beyonce herself? Well, I'm just pulling up to it now. Leanne pulls the car to a stop in front of a cool bed house. House is on one floor. What's going on, Mom? We house hunting for Veronica? No, it's for you. Finley stands in front of the house talking to builders. You're buying me a house. You trying to spoil me like a lost puppy? No, I'm buying Beth and Luke a house because a family should live in a home. Besides, I need a grandchild who doesn't get spoiled by weekly ice cream cones. Mom, this is incredible. We can't ask you to do this too much. Oh, it's nothing. Just consider it a late Mother's Day gift. Plus, I'll have a free vacation home when I need a break from you two. You know, you could always live with Beth and Luke in this family home. Yeah, like Beth will want us to live together. There's a better chance of Bigfoot becoming a fashion model than that happening any day soon. Veronica laughs. I can't believe I caught her with that jerk last night. Who even is he? Alan is her dentist. You don't need to worry about him. It's just physical between them. She still pines for you. Well, how do you know that? Beth's sister, my trusty hair guru, dishes out the details. The chatter flowed faster than hairspray at a rock concert. <laughs> David laughs. So what's your first impression of the house? Is it fit for a prince or just fit for a village idiot? Looks amazing. Looks familiar, though. We've been here before. Oh, yeah. It's Beth's old family home. A little TLC and it'll be the perfect nest for your lovebirds. Oh, yeah. No one though I recognize the picket fence and bike shed. It's like deja vu. Both my termites. Look, Finn has been haggling the price of the house all day. Come on, let's go see it and then you can sweep Beth off her feet with your interior decorating skills. Veronica, Leanne, and David get out of the car and head towards the house. Beth knocks on the rundown house door. It's open. Come in if you dare. Watch out for the family of squirrels in the living room. Beth walks in and is surprised by the cluttered, chaotic mess that is our house. What do you want? Why am I here? Did you bring me to an episode of Hoarders? First of all, I'm sorry. So I've run away when you told me about Connor. It was childish and, well, irresponsible. I mean, I had a son, for crying out loud. You can't dodge your parental duties like a game of dodgeball. But you did. Anyway, I'm truly really sorry for my actions. And it'll take time for you to forgive me, but I hope in due time you will. And no, I won't hold my breath because I'm not a deep sea diver. Beth looks uncomfortable. I hope I will too, but seriously, did you even consider a career in stand-up comedy? You're a natural. Anyway, no, it's going to take some time for me to make up for my actions, but I want to start with this. David pulls out a set of keys and throws them at Beth. The keys that are on the chest fall to the ground, she picks them up. What's this, the keys to the kingdom of clutter? Those keys are the keys to this house. I bought you this house. Ugh, oh, finally I have my own reality TV show. Life with a human tornado in the house of mayhem. That's it? Is that all I'm getting? No confetti cannon or fireworks? What do you expect me to do, organize a flash mob? This house needs more than keys to be a home. I know that. I'm going to fix it for you. Transform this place into a home of our dreams. Vinny's going to handle the renovations. I'll handle all the finance parts of the rebuilding. I'm going to turn this place into a Taj Mahal of suburban bliss. Oh, well, great. Can't wait for the construction noise and epic battles with the home improvement gods. Well, what do you think of the gift? Would you prefer a housewarming llama instead? Well, uh, it won't make up for everything you've done these past months, but to start, that's all I can hope for right now. So thank you, you tornado of chaos. Beth goes to hug David, but then decides to shake his hand instead. Eh, don't worry. We're gonna rip everything down and start again. It's like a phoenix rising from the ashes. A home will rise from the rubble. We're just gonna channel his inner Bob the Builder. We'll make this place shine. How can you afford this? Did you win the lottery or discover buried treasure? Well, it's a 50-50 joint venture with my ma. Vinny and Veronica chipped in too. We're like the Avengers of Home Improvement. Oh, cool. I always knew you had a secret identity as Captain Renovation. Want a quick tour? We'll be dodging construction debris, but it's all part of the adventure. 
Yeah, sure, why not? Let's navigate this hazardous maze together. But I swear, if you encounter a wild boar, I'm blaming you. Beth follows David as we head into the kitchen, ready to embark on the comedic journey of home renovation. David walks in as Veronica, Leanne, and I are having lunch. So, did she like the gift? Did she break out into a spontaneous dance of joy? Yep, she did a full-on interpretive dance routine in the living room. It was like dancing with the stars, but with fewer sequins. Has she forgiven you for your diabolical actions? She considering granting you the prestigious Redeemed Father of the Year award? Well, not exactly, but she's willing to let me see Luke and build from there. Baby steps, you know. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither was trust. Oh, thank God we can finally sleep easy now, knowing that our dear friend David isn't banished to the doghouse forever. David laughs and starts making himself a plate of lunch, as I receive the text on my phone. Take out my phone, read the text. Alright, I gotta go. Duty calls. Someone young and pretty wants a taste of this irresistible charm. Veronica's face falls. David Leanne share a mischievous look. Look, I'm telling you, the ladies in New Jersey can't resist my magnetism. I'm like a walking disco ball of seduction. Yeah, more like an aging disco ball missing a few reflective tiles. I laugh and exit. Veronica picks up the plates, takes them to the kitchen sink, and follows her. I think it's time you told Vinny why you're really here, Veronica. Your heart's been singing his name since you arrived. I don't know what you're talking about. My heart only sings off-key karaoke. Honey... You love him. You always have. That's why you're back here. You had to fight for the love of your life, not just for a slice of pizza. Veronica turns around to face Leanne, her expression a mix of nervousness and determination. Uh, what if? No, what ifs allowed. You won't know until you tell him. It's time to unleash your inner romantic warrior. Veronica takes a deep breath, preparing herself for the love battlefield. All right, I'll do it. I'll tell Vinny. I'll confess my undying love and hope he doesn't run for the hills. Leanne cheers and gives Veronica an enthusiastic hug. You better do it quick. Vinny's like a shooting star, always disappearing into the night sky. Veronica and Leanne turn around startled. Why should I do it quickly? Because Vinny's just gone to another one of his famous booty calls. Man, there's more secret admirers than Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. Right. Better catch him before he conquers another heart. Well, good luck, my brave love warrior. I won't need it, but thanks for the well wishes. David and Leanne share a laugh as Veronica heads towards the kitchen door, ready to declare her feelings. On this comically hopeful note, we fade out. Endless Love was voiced by me, Emerson Peary, and written by Joao Nasida. If you've enjoyed this series, please share this series with your family and friends. And also be sure to subscribe to That Love Podcast and follow us on Twitter and Instagram on That Love Pod. Thank you for listening to this series. See you soon with more shows on That Love Podcast.